Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from the Special Administrative Region of Hong Kong. As though with the ability to crystal ball gaze into an imminent pandemic, the 2019 Annual Report on Global Preparedness for Health Emergencies by Global Preparedness Monitoring Board reported in September 2019 that the world is not prepared for a fast-moving virulent respiratory pathogen pandemic. It is timely that this unique Forum 9.5 provides a platform for sharing of experience and indeed to stimulate the speedy actions to work in solidarity to fight the pandemic. Today, I would like to share with you the approach of Hong Kong, which may be characterized by four elements. Recognize, strategize, legalize and revitalize in tackling the COVID-19 pandemic from the public administration and legislative perspective. With the experience of dealing with a few novel infectious diseases in the last two decades, Hong Kong is vigilant in staying alert with onset of any such diseases anywhere in the world. We operate under the three principles of speed, rigor and transparency. On 8th January, Hong Kong made legislative amendments to its Prevention and Control of Disease Ordinance by including severe respiratory disease associated with a novel infectious agent in the schedule of infectious diseases in the ordinance. The same amendment has also been made in the list of specified scheduled infectious diseases under the subsidiary legislation of the ordinance to enable certain control measures to be taken immediately. This is an important move because it provides the legal basis for adopting in a timely manner emergency measures for the effective prevention and control of COVID-19 pandemic in Hong Kong. Based on the experience of the 2003 SARS outbreak, the Hong Kong government adopts a strategy of containment with specific measures to achieve early identification, early isolation and early treatment of the infected, as well as measures to significantly reduce population mobility and in-population social contacts. In its fight against the pandemic, the Hong Kong government makes every decision based on science and justification, with advice from an expert advisory panel and with the ultimate objective of protecting not only the health of the people of Hong Kong, but also the economic and social situation in the city. To implement the containment strategy, various measures have to be adopted with a view to cutting off the human-to-human -human transmission of the virus. There are two perspectives, the control of inbound travellers and the prevention of community outbreak within Hong Kong. Border control measures are devised based on risk assessment of the relevant jurisdictions. They include issuing a compulsory quarantine order to people entering Hong Kong and later denying entry of visitors. To prevent community outbreak of COVID-19 in Hong Kong, personal hygiene and social distancing are crucial. Directions and regulations were issued to prohibit group gathering of more than four people in public places, restrict the operation and also the method of operation of catering and other businesses that may pose a risk of spreading the disease. To supplement the effectiveness of these measures, the enhanced laboratory surveillance program and contact tracing measures conducted by the Centre for Health Protection are equally pivotal. This will facilitate tracing of close contact of confirmed cases and, importantly, identify the source of infection. Given that the relevant measures may affect the legal rights of the community and requires the effective enforcement, they need to be supported by the legal framework of the jurisdiction. This brings us to the important topic of legalize. From a historic perspective, legalization of public health emergency measures can in fact be traced to medieval times when Adriatic port city of Ragusa passed the first quarantine legislation in its fight against the Black Death Plague in 1377. 
in the case of Hong Kong, having regard to the experience during the 2003 SARS outbreak and the international health regulations of the WHO, the Prevention and Control of Disease Ordinance with its subsidiary legislation was introduced in 2008 to provide the principal legal framework for the prevention and control of infectious disease of public health importance. In a legislation-based regime, the recognition of the relevant public health risk at the early stage of, is of great importance. With the legislative amendment, COVID-19 becomes a statutory notifiable infectious disease under the subsidiary legislation of the ordinance. The Department of Health is thereby vested with the statutory powers to, amongst others, put any person who has been or is likely to have been exposed to the risk of contracting the disease under quarantine and isolation. Without such statutory power, the Department of Health would not have been able to effectively handle confirmed or suspected cases timidly. In the principal ordinance, apart from empowering the Secretary for Food and Health to make regulations for the purpose of preventing the introduction into the spread in and the transmission from Hong Kong of any disease, source of disease or contamination, and for the prevention of any disease. It also empowers the Chief Executive in Council to make regulations when the situation turns into one of public health emergency. Under this regime, public health emergency is defined and it includes relevantly the occurrence of or the imminent threat of a disease, an epidemic or a pandemic that has a high probability of causing a large number of deaths in the population or a large number of serious disabilities, whether or not long-term, in the population. The Chief Executive in Council is empowered to impose a broad range of measures for the purposes of preventing, combating or alleviating the effects of such emergency and protecting public health through making regulations under the ordinance so long as such situation persists. In some jurisdictions, a specialised legislation that deals with public health issues may not be available. On the other hand, emergency laws are not uncommon and almost a norm. In Hong Kong, a general regime is to be found in the Emergency Regulations Ordinance, which empowers the Chief Executive in Council to make regulations on occasions of emergency or public danger. While not being statutorily defined in the ordinance, emergency and public danger, as understood in their ordinary meaning and their context, must cover a wide range of situations and occurrence and cannot be exhaustively defined. Emergency is necessarily concerned with a serious event that calls for immediate and drastic action and public danger entails circumstances constituting serious threats to the safety of the public and hence cover public health risks. The Emergency Regulations Ordinance has been in the local statu statute book since 1922 and had been invoked for addressing emergency situations prior to 1997, including, relevantly, the prevention and mitigation of cholera and rabies. Given that the Prevention and Control of Disease Ordinance, legislated in 2008, is the directly relevant public health legislation that provides a specific statutory regime for public health emergencies, in light of the principle of lex specially and as a matter of good governance, it has been invoked instead of the Emergency Regulations Ordinance in our fight against COVID-19. As previously mentioned, a number of public health emergency measures have been imposed for a specified period. The legal basis for these measures have been clearly set out in five new regulations made under the public health emergency regime of the ordinance. In light of the global situation of the pandemic and the increasing number of overseas confirmed cases, 
regulations have been made for implementing compulsory quarantine measures. Quarantine orders issued for travellers at the borders are given legal effect. To facilitate enforcement, electronic or Bluetooth waist wristbands are used to track the locale of the individual who should remain in either quarantine centres or quarantine camps or under home quarantine. To strengthen social distancing measures, a regulation has been made to prohibit any group gathering of more than four persons in any public place. Furthermore, the Secretary for Food and Health has been empowered under another regulation to require catering and certain businesses to implement specific measures through issuing directions. These measures are risk-based and include the temporary closure of premises for certain businesses, such as places of amusement and public entertainment, and requiring catering business to implement measures such as taking temperature of customers upon entry and maintaining a minimum distance of 1.5 meter between tables. It is recognized that there will be an interference of human rights of the individuals and as such, the measures have to be proportional in pursuit of the legitimate aim of protecting public health and in the light of the need to contain imported cases and prevent community outbreak. The legislation-backed measures are complemented with a range of proportionate criminal penalties with investigations conducted by the Department of Health and Law Enforcement Agencies and prosecutions by the Department of Justice to facilitate effective enforcement. The outbreak of COVID-19 brought various inevitable changes in our way of life, including our travel patterns. Nevertheless, as part of social distancing measures, modern technology has provided us with the opportunity in exploring the use of law tech in the provision of legal services. As an example, Hong Kong has recently, for the first time, held the Willem C. Vis East International Commercial Arbitration Mood with 71 teams from 21 jurisdictions and about 250 arbitrators from 52 jurisdictions participating through an online dispute resolution platform supported by the non-governmental Ibram Center amidst the pandemic. This experience exemplifies potential of ODR in resolving disputes in an efficient, effective and fair manner. In fact, our judiciary has also started with the use of video conferencing facilities for remote hearings for suitable civil cases in the High Court. In light of the severe economic and trade impact of the pandemic, the International Monetary Fund is forecasting a global recession in 2020. Under such economic circumstances, government support measures are necessary to support the basic needs of the society and also for revitalizing the economy through assisting industries and affected members of the public. Depending on the nature of the relevant measures, they may be based on legislation or operate through administrative measures. In this regard, the Hong Kong government has established a 30 billion Hong Kong dollars anti-epidemic fund under the Financial Secretary Incorporation Ordinance. We remain vigilant in considering further support measures to alleviate the economic impact of the pandemic as the situation develops. In devising government support measures, it is necessary to ensure that such measures can be implemented efficiently and the assistance can effectively reach the targeted beneficiaries. It is also advisable to take into account the financial position and the long-term fiscal plan of the government and the financial and fiscal viability of the support measures such that the economy can sustain and rebound when the pandemic is over. Decisions will have to be made as to whether the revitalization scheme should, apart from providing government measures, include legislative measures that address the impact of COVID-19 on private contracts or transactions. These considerations would be jurisdiction specific and there is no panacea for all. Government measures alone, however, cannot solve the 
COVID-19 pandemic. To win this war, the continuous support and cooperation of every citizen in our society is indispensable. As recently stated by the WHO Director General in his remarks at the G20 Extraordinary Leaders Summit on COVID-19, no country can solve this crisis alone. He further referred to a paradigm shift in global solidarity, in sharing experience, expertise and resources, and in working together to keep supply lines open and supporting nations who need our support. From the global perspective, we should remind ourselves that in today's interdependent world, all humans share a common destiny. In such challenging times, we need to put aside our differences, stop creating animosity, stand united and work together against the pandemic. As said by the WHO Director General, we cannot win without solidarity. Thank you and good health to you all.